for number eight. They want us to take the area between these two curves. Um, I've gone ahead and I've drawn them. And then they want us to revolve it about the y-axis using the uh, slicing and using cylindrical shells. Um, so the first thing that we have to do is we have to find out where these areas intersect, right? Um, which is these two points, which are going to give us the boundaries for it. So all we have to do here is set these equations equal to each other. Um, so we're going to set x squared is equal to root x. Um, I'm just going to square both sides to make it easier. So x to the power of 4 is equal to x. Then I'm going to bring everything over to one side. Um, so x to the power of 4 minus x is equal to 0. Factor out an x. x times um, x cubed minus 1 is equal to 0. So um, we can see here that the answers are x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. Um, so these points here are the points 0, 0, and the points um, 1, 1. That's where they intersect. So um, once we have this, we're good to try to set up our both of our methods. Um, so the first method that we're going to begin with is by shells, and I'm going to do that on the left. So um, by shells, basically my volume is the integral from... 0 to 1, because that's the boundaries, right? And when I use it by shells, I'm going to take this little chunk here, and I'm going to revolve it about the um, the y-axis. And when I revolve it, it's going to form this really thin cylinder that acts like a paper sheet, right, that has been um, unwrapped. So this paper sheet, it has an area, and if I look at every single little chunk here, these heights, right, between the orange and the green curve, which are the boundaries of my area, and when I revolve it, I'm going to have a bunch of these um, cylinders. So what is happening is we're adding it from 0 to 1. Um, we are adding our areas, right? So it's just the sum of ax dx, the sum of our areas from 0 to 1. So let's think about how we're going to set this up, right? Um, well, the the base of my area, so this is my ax, the base here is just this circumference, right? It's the circumference of my circle. And now the circumference, any circumference is given by 2 pi r. And we can see here that the radius is just the distance from 0 to wherever I'm at on my x-axis. Um, it's just this little distance from 0 to x. So generically speaking, it's just the value of x, right? That's just my radius. Um, so my base is going to be 2 pi x, that's my circumference. And now let's talk about the height. Um, well, the height here, as we can see, the height is this section right here. And this section is basically, um, I'm going to draw that in a different color. This section here is basically this whole area. Um, this whole area is the area beneath, sorry, is the height of the orange curve, right? Minus this little chunk, minus the height of the green curve. So if we do the orange, which is this whole thing, minus the, the green, which is this tiny thing, we're going to um, be left with this dark blue part, which is what we really want. So this dark blue part, this height, is given by the orange, so square root of x, minus the green minus x squared. Um, and so now we have an expression right for our a, our area in terms of x, and it's in terms of x because it changes, right? The further that we go on the x-axis, um, like the wider our circumference will be, the shorter the height, so it definitely changes as a function of x. Uh, so it's just 2 pi x times uh, square root of x minus x squared. And now I'm just going to distribute this x. So this gives us 2 pi times x times root of x is x um, x to the 3 halves. Uh, let me write that a little bit better. So that is x to the 3 halves. And then minus x times x squared is minus x cubed. Um, so now that I have an expression for my area, I can just um, I can just calculate my volume, right? Because my volume is, which is equal to the integral from 0 to 1. I'm going to put the 2 pi outside because it's a constant. And it's going to be the integral of x to the 3 halves minus x cubed and all of this times dx, which is equal to 2 pi 
times, let's see, this is x to the 5 halves times 2 fifths minus um, x to the power of 4 over 4 evaluated from 0 to 1, which is equal to 2 pi. We only have to evaluate the upper boundary, the 1, because the 0 it disappears. Um, that is 2 fifths minus 1, um, 2 fifths minus 1 fourth. So when I multiply everything out, 2 pi times 2 fifths uh, minus 1 over 4, I'm going to get, let's see, that's 3 pi over 10. And that is the volume that I get through the shell method when I revolve it about the y-axis. Now let's try with the slicing method over here to the right. Um, and so for the slicing method, what is going to happen is we're going to have these, um, these disks like so that we are going to stack them up across the y-axis like this. So we're going to sum them up like so. Um, like when we get here, you know, you have an inner and an outer part, right? So you're just summing up these disks vertically, and that's going to give us the volume. Now, because we're summing them up vertically, um, previously we were summing them up horizontally, right, from 0 to 1. Now we're summing them up vertically. We're summing them up on the y-axis from y is equal to 0 all the way out to y is equal to 1. Um, so in this case, our volume is the integral still from y is equal to 0 to y is equal to 1. But now in this case, we're doing a y dy, right? Because we're summing it up across the y-axis. And now our area is not going to be the paper sheet that we were looking at before, but it's going to be this donut. Um, and so the area of this donut is basically the area of the bigger one. Um, and let me do that in. So it's basically the area of the bigger circle, right? Um, like this. And then minus the area of the small circle. So minus this little chunk here. And that's going to give us the donut that we want. So basically here, it's, um, it's our um, area with radius 1. That's our biggest one. Minus the one with radius 2, right? Um, and so... These, before we can talk about these, uh, these radii, we do have to express these functions in terms of y because we're summing them up across the y-axis. We're stacking them up vertically, right? So what we're going to do here is um, we're just going to change things around. So if y is equal to x squared, I want to isolate x. That means that x is equal to root y. Um, that's the green one. And then the orange one, the orange one, um, if... If y is equal to square root of x, I'm just going to square it. Therefore, y squared is equal to x. So the orange one is x is equal to y squared, and the green one is x is equal to root y. And the reason that um, we needed to do it that way was because we are expressing it in terms of y because we're stacking it up across the y-axis, right? Um, so now let's think about what our a1 is. Um, and so our a1... Our a1 is going to be our pi times r1 squared, because any circle is just pi times r squared, which is equal to pi. Um, and the bigger radius is just where it goes from the center, and it touches the outer curve. So it touches this green, I uh, should have done this with a different color. Um, the, the, the outer radius just goes from the center all the way out to where it touches the green curve, right? The green curve is our outer radius. Um, so it's going to be pi times r squared, where in this case it's the green one. So the green one is root y squared. Therefore, a1 is going to be pi times root y squared is just pi times y. And a2 is going to be um, pi times r2 squared. And now r2 is basically going to be from the center all the way to where it touches the orange curve, right? That's like, that's our inner radius here the smallest one. So this one is going to be pi times r2, which is the one in orange. So pi times y squared squared, which gives us pi times y to the power of 4. So um, when we're summing these up, we're actually, we're summing up these disks, right? So um, therefore, our volume is going to be the sum from 0 to 1 of a1 minus a2 times dy, right? So what we have to get here is a1 minus a2. We're just going to leave the pi outside, and that gives us y minus y to the power of 4. So now we have an expression for it, um, which is just pi times y minus y to the power of 4. 
So we're ready to set up our integral. So from 0 to 1, I'm going to put the pi outside. y minus y to the power of 4, which when we integrate it, it gives us pi times, let's see, y squared over 2 minus y to the power of 5 over 5, right? And when I put this in my calculator, um, sorry, evaluated from 0 to 1, well, the lower boundary is going to disappear. It's just going to go to 0. So all I care about is my upper boundary, my 1. Um, and this is basically pi times 1 half minus 1 fifth. Um, so when I put this in my calculator, let's see, what does it give me? 1 half minus 1 fifth. Um, that gives me th th times 3 over 10. So the answer is 3 pi over 10. So once more, we have the same volume, right? Previously, we got 3 pi over 10. Now we also get 3 pi over 10. Um, the only difference is that we're summing up these disks across the y-axis, whereas from the shell method, we were summing up these cylinders across the x-axis. But as we can see, they give us the same answer.